couple more questions, I think. Uh, how do you balance between work, training, and everything else? Uh, well, I don't really. Uh, it's the time now. It is nearly two o'clock in the morning, and it's a Saturday. And this is the only time I found today that I can answer these questions and do this video. Uh, a typical weekend would be. Uh, uh, I have all my kids have their various classes in the mornings into the late afternoon. Then we have our household chores, and I go and make dinner. I'll uh, sit down, you know, Saturday evenings. I'm with the wife, and we're relaxing, watching TV, watching a video. Um, but at the back of my mind, I have probably a dozen uh, design projects on the go. I have blog articles to write. I have websites to review, um, apparel to review, and. Um, you know these are always on the back of my mind so I'll hit the computer at some point in the evening and just just solidly do do my work from let's say from about 11 at night until whenever I feel tired which could be like 2 or 3 in the morning so stuff like this uh, is fun to do but I'll sneak it in at, like late at night and uh, basically I don't sleep and that's how I fit it in uh, you know I have a full-time day job two young kids, I've got a Jiu Jitsu Academy that I run and I teach twice a week I also do my own training so I go to Mill Hill twice a week I have all my art projects, I have writing, I have photography, I have so many things going on which I love completely and I, I, I throw my heart and soul into but it's uh, it's at the expense of my sleep so I'll get usually about four hours sleep a night and that's pretty much every day and I've just got used to it <laughs> um, <clears throat> what is your favorite submission? <clears throat> My favourite submission. Well, I go through phases. I think everyone goes through phases, don't they? <clears throat> I think for a long period, I was really obsessed with um, variations of collar chokes. Uh, so, so you got your basic cross collar chokes, and then you. Um, I went through a period of really loving suicide chokes. You know, the the bow and arrow, um, the samurai style uh, position chokes, and then I got really into. Uh, where you have to wrap the lapel over the neck and those kind of chokes uh, and there's, there's dozens and dozens of them and I tried to learn them all and use them in sparring <clears throat> and they were fun but they're a killer on the fingers you can see my fingers they're an absolute killer on the fingers so uh, these days I really don't f focus on submissions it's really terrible I suppose it's really uh, <clears throat> not very um, I'm not following the the party line, am I? But my I, I take great joy in just um, the the transitions. You know, that's I really I'm really obsessed now with moving from one position to another to another and turn and finding that flow. I'm really obsessed with flow. And when I teach my students, they they probably all just think, uh, "What are you talking about, flow? I'm just desperately trying to get out of this closed guard." But um, for me, jiu-jitsu is about the path of least resistance, or certainly jiu-jitsu technique. Uh, or rather, another way of saying it is jiu-jitsu is, is the, uh, a method of um, maximum, efficiency, a maximum efficiency towards your end goal. So rather than just say, oh, don't use strength, don't, use, don't power your way through anything, I think it's more informative to tell students, uh, no, uh, try this and then this because that's the most efficient use of your body against what they're doing to you so <clears throat> because you can use strength you can use power you can use this and that to to just blitz your way through a certain position or a pass or this and that anyway yeah, I'm, I'm digressing but the point is I'm my obsession right now my focus is on looking at wider concepts wider concepts and theories behind why certain techniques work and why you would use them when you would use them and what are the options so you've got your why when what how when this and that so if you can answer all those questions about why you're doing it and when to do it uh, it makes more sense to you uh, certainly as a to see the the bigger picture so just to focus on submissions uh, uh, personally I think is at the higher level anyway is is not necessarily the point of jiu-jitsu although it is the point because you want to it's still a self-defense stroke fighting art and you do want to finish somebody off so um, I don't know I guess if you speak to any purple brown black belt they have these similar sorts of trains of thoughts in their head um, 
but for for beginners and newcomers and people developing and improving their 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 early days of the journey perhaps those things are best thought of later on and it is good to think of submissions because it's it's a nice goal to to look forward to <clears throat> so yeah I don't have a favorite submission I used to like collar chokes um, I guess I like all submissions now uh, <clears throat> oh yeah yeah I like uh, all leg attacks that's if 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 you could single one thing out that I'm that I have a preference for it's at the moment it's leg attacks and foot attacks mainly straight ankle uh, Achilles lock based attacks but uh, you know I'm also exploring uh, uh, toe holds knee bars all those sorts of things just because uh, they're fun to do and um, and they're kind of hip and trendy and what everyone's doing right now in in, in these in the competition these professional competitions that we all watch on, on the internet <clears throat> uh, could okay so could I pass my own guard yes I probably could because my guard isn't really that good um, uh, and again it goes back to you get these sorts of obsessions don't you so one month you know as as a pope but I was obsessed with De La Hiva guard and the next month I'd move on to spider guard and this and that um, I mean uh, as a, as a as a balance I'd probably I'm pretty much much more in favor of playing guard than I'm trying to pass guard so but I've made a conscious effort since brown belt to not always just play guard by default so when I'm sparring in class I will just stand up and wait for the guy to form a, a guard position then I'll try and work passes so um, <clears throat> so the, the the thing that I do is I've recently discovered uh, BJJ uh, yoga for BJJ run by uh, Sebastian Broche uh, I've been doing that for about six months it's a it's it's basically an uh, a website an online yoga training program and because he's uh, a Brazilian Jiu Jitsu black belt as well as a yoga instructor he's managed to tailor the exercises the stretches and the flows um, to cater for uh, the Jiu Jitsu crowd because you know as you know us Jiu Jitsu guys will will be very strong in certain aspects of our body but probably not as strong in other aspects of our body so he's tailored these these routines and stretches to um, keep us supple uh, fit and stretched out uh, so we can have a prolonged Jiu Jitsu career and so far I have to say it's, do it's done everything that he's, he's promised I feel much better the aches and pains that I get um, if I look after myself um, they're less prevalent after training so so I use uh, I'll do about a 30 to 40 minute uh, yoga flow prior to uh, turning up to class um, and afterwards I'll do like a very 10 quick 10 minute stretch uh, those are on training days and on non training days uh, if I have time um, I'll pick one of the more obscure uh, sessions on his website and try those just for my own interest and again it's just another way to explore how your body can work how you can push yourself stretch yourself and uh, uh, keep active uh, unfortunately we live in a very static lifestyle I certainly do I spend a lot of time drawing I spend a lot of time in the office I spend a lot of time in the car a lot of time sitting down as inevitably my back has paid the price and it's very very common a lot of us Jiu Jitsu guys have really painful backs, lower back pain and uh, of course yes you can get lots and lots of um, help for that in, uh, but uh, for me I find the yoga has helped a lot and um, almost rejuvenated my my energy levels uh, when I do attend a class I, I feel I can, I can do things that I probably w was a bit too tentative before and that's all thanks to being able to loosen up and understand my body a bit more through the yoga for BJJ so cheers Sebastian <clears throat> tips for recovery uh, well for me you know I'm not a, 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 an SNE, S, SNC expert um, for me what I do is after training because uh, I go to evening class um, we'll finish about 9.30 9.40 I don't get home till about 10 and I just, hit, I just have a, a hot bath and then I'll have a light snack, and then I get sit at my desk and work on my uh, art for you know a good two three hours. That's my recovery. Okay, so what I really need is um, more sleep 
and um, I must admit I must I should really concentrate on more, on more healthy diet and uh, but I know those sort of things that I do need I should really take more care of myself in that respect so um, so that so I think that's that's what uh, certainly for me that's that's those are my goals okay uh, let's see what final question I think what is it about BJJ that you find so appealing well I think I have to cast my mind back to why I took up Jiu -Jitsu, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu in the first place I was already training in Japanese Jiu Jitsu and in the style that we did there was very little sparring uh, I'd say almost hardly any at all it was all set, set pieces so somebody would punch you, you would block uh, do a strike and then throw them once they're on the ground you do a sequence of techniques to immobilize them I mean it's all good fun um, I still think much of the syllabus that we were training in had rele has relevance to to self defense and um, it was certainly got me physically fit but there's always that uh, towards the latter part of my my journey there um, once I got my black belt and was progressing through the the dan dan levels uh, I got up to a second degree black belt uh, but further than that it became a lot more um, less self-defense focused and much more focused on kata and weapons work uh, trying to learn uh, to use the katana and various other things the bow staff and it got a lot more traditional in that respect and I must say I didn't really uh, I didn't really enjoy all that I really wanted to grapple and, and get stuck in so I uh, I didn't I wanted I at the about um, when I took up Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, um, it overlapped with my training in traditional traditional Japanese Jiu Jitsu by a good, I'd say four three or four years. Uh, increasingly, as I spent more time uh, training in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, I was I was enjoying much much more that aspect and less and less the the Japanese Jiu Jitsu. So, you know, at some point I had to make a decision because in order to progress in in BJJ. I knew that I had to invest more of my time and uh, I, I was also running a, a club at the time so uh, um, my one of my students had progressed to black belt so he uh, he kindly took on my uh, jiu, -jitsu, uh, jiu jitsu club so that I could pretty much um, retire from that scene and invest whatever time I had fully to Brazilian Jiu Jitsu so, so for me, it was it was very much the sparring, the the very very applicable uh, techniques that you could use. I found that uh, there there was there wasn't so much of that disconnect between something that I learnt in class and that I could use in sparring uh, against somebody who was, um, you know, a fully resisting sparring partner. Whereas in Japanese jiu jitsu, there was a lot of you know, and we simulate a punch here, and we simulate uh, an eye gouge here, and, and this and that, and you know, it's it's, a, it's very theory based, and um, you know, it's still very physical. Uh, and uh, you know, as I say, I didn't, I do still believe that a lot of the the stuff being taught um, has use and relevance, and I have full respect for for the art. But for me, I knew that to, my journey was going to continue on with Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. I just fell in love with it. Um, it's it's just so vast. It's just such a vast uh, system, and also it's so personal to to what what the techniques that I like and the way I express myself when I'm sparring and rolling and competing is completely different from another guy who probably started exactly the same time as me, weighs the same as me, um, is the same age as me. You know, he or she will will have a completely their own set of uh, favorite techniques and moves and even if we were to do the same techniques they would do it their way and I would do it my way so as somebody who uh, who's a very visual person and very creative that I am Brazilian Jiu Jitsu uh, is is the perfect platform with which to 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 play basically I just see it as a form of play I know it's not you know cool because hey it's a fighting art and we're you know it's, we should be learning to kill people but no I just see it as adult fun playtime in in strangle and joint locking format so uh, with that in mind I'll leave you with that thought 
and thank you very much for the time to allow me to uh, have my voice on your uh, website. Cheers, thank you, and catch me at uh, www.meerkatsu.com. Thank you. Bye.